1989, the Liberty Bowl signed an historic agreement with the U.S. Military Academy, the U.S. Naval Academy, and the U.S. Air Force Academy. With this new beginning, the Liberty Bowl has taken one more step toward embellishing its goal of honoring freedom and patriotism in America. Every year, one of the most intense and emotional rivalries in all of college football is the battle for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Army, Navy, and Air Force focus their entire seasons on this three-team struggle for supremacy. With victories over both Army and Navy, the United States Air Force Academy was the 1989 winner of the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, and the Falcons would be the host team of the 31st annual Liberty Bowl Classic. Classic is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis and by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association. A record crowd of more than 60,000 turned out as the Liberty Bowl once again presented two of college football's premier teams, the Falcons of Air Force and the Rebels of Mississippi. Under 1985 National Coach of the Year, Fisher DeBerry, the Air Force Academy has gained three bowl berths, including this visit to Memphis. Utilizing an extremely effective wishbone offense, the Falcons moved the ball an average of 480 yards per game in 1989. Leading the charge was Heisman Trophy finalist, D. Dallas. Unlike most quarterbacks, Dallas runs as effectively as he passes. His career total of 3,612 yards rushing is the most by any quarterback in NCAA history. As Dallas goes, so goes the Falcons' dangerous rushing attack. For the Rebels of Ole Miss, success came hard. But despite numerous injuries at key positions, Billy Brewer, two-time SEC Coach of the Year, led them to a 7-4 record. A big reason for their success was the brilliance of John Darnell, only the second quarterback in Mississippi history to pass for over 2,000 yards in a single season. Sophomore running back Randy Baldwin added a second dimension to the Rebels' attack as he rushed for 642 yards and scored 60 points the highest rushing numbers of any Ole Miss player since 1979. The Rebels and their fans had also dedicated this game to Ole Miss safety Chucky Mullins. Paralyzed as a result of a late season injury, Mullins' special pregame visit to the locker room would inspire his teammates. Motivated by the courage of their fallen friend, Old Miss would play with an unusual determination as they made their third visit to the annual Liberty Bowl Classic. The players' first meeting wasn't on the field, but at the annual players' party, hosted by Memphis Mayor Dick Hackett. In addition to enjoying a relaxed meal, it was here that players had the opportunity to show off some of their hidden talents. As the Sadie Hawkins aerobic troupe proved, there is nothing like a little music and motion to help keep those muscles in tune. Players and coaches joined in, proving the dancers weren't the only ones with all the right moves. A more formal atmosphere 
atmosphere was to be found at the elegant annual black tie affair. Hundreds of guests turned out to help Memphis pay its yearly tribute to American patriotism. As guests had the chance to make new acquaintances, the fabulous reception set the stage for the highlight of the evening. An electrifying performance by the world-famous Brunson Brothers. First annual Liberty Bowl luncheon played host to more than 2,000 people. Here, players, coaches, and school administrators would pay tribute to those who serve as college athletics' most positive influences. Former University of Kentucky head coach Jerry Claiborne accepted the Academic Achievement Award on behalf of the university and its football team, which graduated more than 90% of its players. Because of Mr. Dudley's patriotism and support of our military service... Lieutenant General Charles Hamm presented Liberty Bowl founder A.F. Bud Dudley with the American Spirit Award, the highest form of civilian recognition given by the Air Force's recruiting service. Thank you, Mr. Dudley, for your dedication and hard work in providing Air Force opportunities to young Americans. Distinguished Service Award, the Liberty Bowl's highest honor, was presented to Chris Schenkel for his 38 years of dedicated service as a network sports commentator. The 1983 recipient was William E. Simon, former Secretary of the Treasurer. I got to know him extremely well when he was President of the United States Olympic Committee, based in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Here's what he said when he accepted this award in 1983, and you're often able to express yourself better by quoting others. He said, if you wish to discover America, come to the Liberty Bowl. Memphis's annual surge of Liberty Bowl patriotism is a good thing. Nothing hokey, nothing phony. Real people are exhibiting real pride in who they are and where they live, and showing real gratitude for membership in the greatest society man has ever devised. That, too, is what I think of Memphis, Tennessee. A night of fun-filled entertainment awaited the players as they attended the Gridiron Rodeo. For once, they had the chance to sit back and relax as someone else made the tackles and suffered the hard knocks. <laughs> On game day, thousands turned out for the pregame buffet, where Southern hospitality and civic pride joined together to form a winning combination. An autograph session by Liberty Bowl queen Jana Burroughs thrilled many of the youngsters in the crowd. There was anticipation in the air as the two schools would end a week of celebration with a fitting climax, the Battle of the Band. And it was Air Force that exploded onto the scene first. <laughs> the excitement continued as Old Miss burst into its own pep rally in a fun-filled attempt to fly higher than the Air Force.
As game time approached, Miss Marguerite Piazza once again performed a rousing salute to our nation with her singing of the national anthem, the traditional beginning of the Liberty Bowl's nationwide telecast. crowd was set for Air Force Mississippi, each looking to end their season with a coveted Liberty Bowl triumph. John Darnell wasted little time in proving that Ole Miss was ready to do battle. As the school's single season passing yardage record holder, Darnell quickly led his team to three first downs. minute and seven seconds into the game, Darnell set his sights on the end zone, and Reed Hines provided a perfect touchdown target. Air Force Two was determined to start off on the right foot. Ron Gray's kickoff return gave the Falcons excellent field position, and D. Dallas showed why he is such a dangerous threat as a runner. Keeping the ball on the ground, the Falcons drove 45 yards on 11 plays, culminated by a Joe Wood field goal. Air Force trailed Ole Miss 7-3. The pace for this year's Liberty Bowl had been set early. With their attacks led by two veteran quarterbacks, both teams moved the ball with deadly accuracy. As the Rebels gambled on fourth down and two, running back Randy Baldwin provided more than just the first down. Air Force was no less eager to get into the end zone. Dallas, the WAC Offensive Player of the Year, piloted the Falcons on a 66-yard excursion. then scrambled for what would be his 42nd career rushing touchdown. As the Falcons went for two, the Rebels' Jeff Carter said no, and the score remained, 14-9 Ole Miss. After a Liberty Bowl first quarter record 23 points had been scored, both defenses showed some of their own muscle. second interception turned possession over to Ole Miss and the Rebs Randy Baldwin steered his way down the sideline for his second touchdown of the game. Two possessions later, another spectacular interception by the Rebels secondary grounded the Air Force and set up Baldwin's brilliant 44-yard gallop. defense dug in and halted the old Miss effort as Randall Gladney fell on the loose ball. Air Force could not move the football and was forced to punt. In the final moments of the opening half, the Rebs' Pat Coleman sped 58 yards for the touchdown. And the first 30 minutes ended with Old Miss on top, 28-9.
Halftime has traditionally been one of the most special events at the Liberty Bowl. This year was even more spectacular. Nearly 2,000 students representing 21 high schools from around the nation helped to celebrate the signing of the historic agreement between the three service academies and the Liberty Bowl. Titled a 21 band salute to American patriotism, the show began with a musical tribute to each of the academies. Founded in 1955, the United States Air Force Academy is the youngest of the three schools, with approximately 4,400 cadets attending the Colorado Springs campus. The United States Military Academy, the oldest of the three schools, was founded in 1802 on the banks of the Hudson River in West Point, New York and graduates nearly 1,000 new officers each year. Located in Annapolis, Maryland, the Naval Academy was first established in 1845. And as with all three academies, stands for the highest levels of duty and honor to its country. Traditionally a part of the Navy, the U.S. Marine Corps was also honored in this Liberty Bowl halftime spectacular. Here, an act of patriotism is recreated that has for many years served as their trademark, raising our national flag in the Battle of Iwo Jima during World War II. As the celebration continued, the Brunson brothers joined in, highlighting a performance of Stars and Stripes Forever in honor of our nation's flag. Vocalist Lynn Newsom from the Bedour Memorial Center for the Mentally Handicapped and their choir provided a rousing finale with this emotional performance of America the Beautiful. Joining him are Miss Liberty Bowl, Jana Burroughs, along with the Miracle Choir from Senatobia, Mississippi.
another stirring and memorable halftime spectacular at the Liberty Bowl. Trailing 28-9, Air Force returned from the break, determined to climb back into the game. The Falcons took the second half kickoff and marched 72 yards on five plays. The key was a 61-yard jaunt by quarterback D. Dallas, over a 22 academy and seven whack offensive records. From the 16, Chris Howard blasted inside the five. The Falcons sliced into the Rebs' lead as Greg Johnson smashed over for the initial score of the second half. It was now 28 to 15. Ole Miss. Following the Air Force score, momentum seemed to be flowing the Falcons' way. Their defense kept Ole Miss from mounting any sustained drives. Quickly, Ole Miss fired up its defense and regained possession, forcing a costly Falcon fumble. Two plays later, the Rebels would put more points on the board as Pat Coleman glided in for his second score of the game. And Mississippi led 35-15. The Rebs' dominance continued early into the fourth quarter as they took away the deep threat and controlled Dallas' attempts to run. <laughs> On offense, Randy Baldwin carried the brunt of the attack and would finish the game with 177 yards. Then from the eight-yard line, backup quarterback Rush Chows connected with Ed Thigpen for Old Miss's final points of the night. But Air Force was not to be denied. Senior quarterback Lance McDowell took over the controls. Coming into this bowl game, McDowell had thrown only eight passes all season, completing seven of them. He equaled that feat in the final 11 minutes of the game. On second and 14, McDowell managed to avoid the charging Rebels and fired a bomb to Steve Sen for six points. This partnership proved to be extremely productive. With time running out late in the fourth quarter, they teamed up for three more completions, including a beautiful 22-yard touchdown. Air Force had made a valiant last-minute stand. But as the clock ticked away, the Rebels' 42 points proved insurmountable. For Ole Miss coach Billy Brewer, a dream had come true. Let me share two dreams with you that I've had about all my life, and one was to be the head football coach at Ole Miss. The second one was to be the head football coach at Ole Miss and someday bring a football team to the Liberty Bowl. Although Ole Miss had won the game, both teams had taken part in a tradition that exemplifies the best in American spirit and sportsmanship. An historic partnership had been formed between the Liberty Bowl and the nation's service academies. This 31st annual classic had also provided Ole Miss the opportunity to accomplish a special mission. A victory dedicated to an injured teammate. And the total of 71 points proved to be one of the highest scoring battles of the bowl season. As this Memphis Classic enters the 90s with a bright, unlimited future, it is a new beginning that connects the three service academies and the Liberty Bowl as partners in patriotism. The 1989 Liberty Bowl Classic has been brought to you by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association. 
and by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis.